Uzo kumene na. My name is Pumla Williams. Can you hear me? Tete foot. Okay. I'm Pumla Williams. We are about to commence with the post cabinet briefing. <laughs> My name is Pumla Williams. I will be commencing the post cabinet briefing.
Good afternoon. My name is Pumla Williams. Today we are about to commence with a post-cabinet briefing. I am assisted on the telephone lines by Ignatius and on the WhatsApp group I'm assisted by Peliswa. On the sign language I'm assisted by Keta and Nicolette. Today's post-cabinet briefing will be addressed by Minister Ronald Lamola. And thank you very much for coming and it's over to you, Minister. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Williams. Uh, today I am uh, Minister Mtembu, who could not be here due to a family bereavement. It's a statement on the virtual cabinet meeting of Wednesday, 5 August 2020. Abuse of resources for coronavirus disease interventions. Cabinet reflected with disappointment on recent reports of acts of corruption and theft of much needed resources that government has allocated to save lives and livelihoods during the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. Some unscrupulous individuals and companies have been looting state resources that were meant to provide food to needy families and personal protective equipment to frontline officials particularly healthcare workers. Such criminals and immoral activities included inflating quoted prices, intercepting and redirecting food parcels meant for the poor, and acts of fraud involving funds designated to alleviate the hardships of employees and businesses affected by the shutting down of economic activities during the, the national lockdown. Cabinet has called on all public institutions to uphold the highest standards of integrity and accountability and fulfill their mandates effectively and efficiently. Cabinet remains committed to building a capable, ethical and developmental state. It supports the recent call by President Cyril Ramaphosa for law enforcement agencies to do whatever they can to arrest those involved in corruption, irrespective of who they are, ensure they recover the looted funds. Government has over the years introduced various in interventions to fight against the scourge of corruption, which negatively affects the delivery of services to the poor and the vulnerable. The recently established Special Coordination Center aims to strengthen the collective efforts amongst the law enforcement agencies to prevent, detect, investigate and prosecute COVID-related corruption. It comprises the Financial Intelligence Center, the Independent Police Investigative Directorate, National Prosecuting Authority, South African Police Service Directorate for Priority Crimes Investigation, known as the HOCS, Crime Intelligence and Detective Services, South African Revenue Service, the Special Investigating Unit, and the State Security Agency. Allegations of corruption being investigated included fraud, include fraudulent distribution of food parcels, social relief grants, procurement of PPEs and other medical supplies, and the looting of the unemployment insurance funds COVID-19 temporary employee employer relief scheme. To speed up and strengthen the process of dealing with corruption, President Ramaphosa recently signed a proclamation authorizing the SIU to investigate any unlawful or improper conduct in the procurement of any goods, works and services during or related to the national state of disaster in state institutions. The SIU is empowered to probe any allegations relating to the misuse of COVID-19 funds across all spheres of government. And, institutions and institute civil proceedings to recover any damages or losses incurred by the state. To ensure that action is taken speedily, 
the President will receive interim reports on investigations every six weeks. He will also get reports from the Health Sector Anti-Corruption Forum that is tasked to investigate irregularities and maladministration in the health sector. Cabinet also welcomes the amendments to the original regulations of the Commission of Inquiry into the allegations of state capture, corruption and fraud in the, pub in the public sector, including organs of states. The amended regulations will now allow for the sharing of information by the Commission with other law enforcement agencies. This will help to, es to expedite the investigations and prosecutions of corruption-related cases. As part of strengthening these interventions, Cabinet also approved the setting up of a team of four ministers to, among others, look into all COVID-19-related procurements made during the lockdown period and strengthen the current procurement system. The team comprises of the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Mr. Ronald Lamula, who is the convener, Minister of Finance, Mr. Tito Mboweni, Minister of Public Service and Administration, Mr. Senzo Mkunu, the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Dr. Nkosa Zana Lamini Zuma, and Minister in the Presidency, Mr. Jackson Mtembo. All government departments will be expected to submit all procurement contracts awarded during this period to this ministerial team to be published and made accessible to the public. Cabinet welcomes the announcement that at least 36 corruption-related cases are at various stages of investigation and prosecution. These cases send a strong message that government will not tolerate any acts of corruption, particularly amongst its officials, and that all perpetrators will be arrested and prosecuted. Corruption is the biggest crime that robs the poor and deprives them of basic services. A society as a society, we are responsible for the fight against corruption and should expose it without fear or favor. Cabinet urges the public to use the different, the different national and sectoral anti-corruption hotlines created to support efforts to expose and pursue corruption-related allegations. The National Digital and, and, and Future Skills Strategy Cabinet approved the publication of the National Digital and Future Skills Strategy the strategy is the outcome of the White Paper on the National Integrated Information and Technology that was published in September 2016. The strategy responds to a coordinated framework to promote skills capacity for all sectors of the economy within the context of a digital transformation and technological advancement of the fourth industrial revolution. It provides for a futuristic and collaborative implementation approach which will include the private sector and academia and society as a whole. The National Climate Change Adaptation Strategy Cabinet approved the NCAC, NCCAC S for implementation. This strategy serves as the country's national adaptation plan as required by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. The National Climate Change Adaptation Strategy outlined a set of objectives, interventions, and outcomes to enable our country to give expression to South Africa's commitment to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The strategy that was developed in consultation with government, the private sector and local communities is aimed at reducing the vulnerability of society, the economy and the environment to the effects of climate change. It also provides an integrated and coordinated approach to the management of adaptation measures in response to the impacts of climate change. Now that it has been adopted, the Department of Environmental, of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries will, will coordinate all levels of government, business and civil society in its implementation. The 10-year plan will be reviewed every five years. Women's Month Commemoration, August 2020. Cabinet approved the Women's Month Commemoration Program under the theme Realizing Women's Rights for an Equal Future. This year's Women's Month focuses on, on a call to action to champion women's rights and gender equality. Government is committed to the fight to eradicate gender-based violence and femicide. Cabinet this week approved three bills for submission to Parliament. 
which will strengthen our justice system to support and protect victims of GBVF. The month-long program will enhance the mobilization of women and strengthen organized formations of women towards a sustainable path of action on issues affecting women. On Sunday, 9 August 2020, President Ramaphosa will undertake a nationwide televised activity together with a panel of guest speakers. The bills. GBVF bills approved. Cabinet approved the submission of, of the three GBV bills. The Criminal Law Sexual Offenses Related Matters Amendment Bill of 2020, National Register for Sexual Offenses and the Domestic Violence Amendment Bill to Parliament. These bills respond to a, to a number of issues raised during the Presidential Summit against GBVF held in 2018 in respect of the criminal justice system. The amendments provide a victim-centered response in the criminal justice system in respect of sexual offenses. It tightened bail's conditions for perpetrators of sexual offenses. Warrants of arrest will no longer be required prior to law enforcement agencies responding to a reported sexual crimes after the passing of the bill into an act. Parole conditions are also strengthened and min minimum sentences increased. The amendments also strengthen the consequences of contravening a protection order. The Criminal Law Sexual Offenses Related Matters Amendment Bill also amends the National Register for Sex Offenders by broadening its scope from only children and mentally disabled persons and extends it to protect all vulnerable groups. Persons who are in this register are compelled to disclose this information when they submit applications to work with these groups. <coughs> the Domestic Violence Amendment Bill facilitates the obtaining of protection orders against acts of domestic violence via, an elect via electronic means. It obliges the Department of Social Development and Department of Health to provide certain services to victims of domestic violence and aligns the provisions of the Domestic Violence Act 1998 with the provisions of the Protections from Harassment Act of 2011. Cannabis for, pri for Private Purposes Bill of 2020. Cabinet approved the submission to Parliament of the Cannabis for Private Purposes Bill of 2020 for processing. The bill gives effect to a constitutional court judgment that declared unconstitutional some parts of the Drugs and Drug Trafficking Act of 1992 and Medicines and Related Substances Control Act of 1965. The judgment was, was suspended for 24 months to allow Parliament to correct those sections. This bill regulates the use and position of cannabis and the cultivation of cannabis plants by an adult for personal use. It provides the limit of the quantity of cannabis that may be possessed by an adult and criminalizes the smoking of cannabis in public. The Fundraising Amendment Bill of 2017. Cabinet approved the submission of the bill to Parliament. The bill rationalizes the Fundraising Act of 1978 by consolidating the existing three, three funds, the Disaster Relief Fund, the South African Defense Force Fund, and the Refugee Relief Fund into the National Social Development and Relief Fund. Appointments. Cabinet made the following appointments into the South African uh, Police Services, the Houghton Hawks Directorate, the Eastern Cape Hawks Directorate, the CEO of the Road um, Accident Fund. It has also appointed non-executive members to the board of the Road, road Traffic Infringement Agency, the non-executive directors to the airport company South Africa Board, the non-executive members to the Railway Safety Regulating Board, the Chief Financial Officer of the South African Post Office, the CEO of Centec, the CEO of the National Nuclear Regulator, the National Nuclear Regulator Board, the Board of Directors to the National Radioactive Waste Disposal Institute, the Term of Office for the Interim Board of Directors of Small Business and Enterprises the Deputy Director General, Information and Technology, uh, 
Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Williams. Thank you very much, Minister. I will entertain questions. Uh, I don't have any sequence. If there's any questions from WhatsApp, if there's any questions from the call, and I see there's also Vuyo who's already raised the hand. Maybe we will start with you, Vuyo, because there's nobody from the telephone line and WhatsApp. Okay, Vuyo. from uh, ENCA. Um, Minister, just can you um, explain uh, to us how this uh, ministerial uh, committee is going to work, uh, what exactly you are going to do, um, are you going to have some kind of a secretariat or is it the departments that are going to do the legwork uh, and what decisions are you really empowered um, to, 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 to take. Okay, that's the first question. Can I take any more questions before I ask the minister? Is there a question? Yes, did you? Okay. Uh, we have uh, two questions from Vika Speaker, Network 24. He says, did any of the ministers on the president's committee who will investigate the alleged corruption with the provision of PPEs or any of their family members receive government contracts to provide PPEs or any other services related to COVID-19. The second question is, will a new Scorpions like crime fighting unit be established? If so, when? To whom will they report to? Will, how will this unit work together with the Hawks, NPA, Asset Forfeiture Unit, and SIU? What will be the new unit's mandate? What kind of authorization will they have? Please provide details on how this unit will work, if it is in fact established. Another question is from Sunday Times, Stenbile Tele. What exactly does looking into procurement entail? Does it mean that ministers will personally be going through the contracts? And what exactly would they be looking for in those contracts? What happens when there, there arises a conflict of interest in terms of their own staff or colleagues appearing in some shape or form on those contracts? Why not just allow law enforcement to look into these contracts given their expertise that's all for now on the whatsapp group thank you there's one caller then minister i'll hand it over to you just one caller thank you tg uh, i have bonga fulani from ewn hi minister thank you uh bonga from ewn minister what changes now about your stance on corruption because in the past, we've seen ANC officials implicated in big scandal corruption, making their way, leaving cabinet, but showing up in parliament. So when you're saying you are taking a tough start now, after condemning, after promising, what happened? Are we going to see more action or is that, you know, another one of lip service? Number two, your committee which you had now looking into this corruption issue, is there a deadline for reports? Because I hear that... Uh, provincial people must keep it, uh, list before the month end. But what about your committee? Is the deadline, or two years later, like I said, capture will still see a committee investigating? Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to you, Minister. Thank you very much and uh, to state that indeed as we have said in the statement cabinet is very concerned about the ongoing 
um, allegations of corruptions across the country. The, the committee is going to order, as the president has already done, all government departments across the country to publish the list of all those that um, have received or participated in any procurement during this uh, period of the national state of disaster. And that is the first step of um, accountability, transparency and ethical leadership. Because from that step, law enforcement agencies, if there is any suspicion or allegations of any corruption, they will have the information at hand. It is aimed to ensure that it is known who got the tender, for how much, what was the purpose of that day, particular by every member of the public from wherever they are work, working from, to erase any form of suspicion. If there will be any allegation, the law enforcement agencies are empowered to act without any fear, favor, or prejudice to anyone, either in the <clears throat> of any status in society. Whether it's in cabinet, whether it's a DG, whether it's a DDG, whether it's a CEO, whether it's a low-ranking official somewhere in a municipality or in the private sector, anywhere, the message from cabinet is that they must act without fear or favor. They must do their job. They have been freed. Um, if there was any doubt that they, uh, 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 they must not do their job, Cabinet is saying they must just do what the Constitution says. It is constitutionally guaranteed. No one is going to intervene or interfere on the job of law enforcement agencies. What we are doing in the committee is to make the information and put it at their disposal. The committee will also look into how do we help to, in terms of the bottlenecks, as you are aware, the fusion center that uh, already the law enforcement agencies have started organically is growing into a functioning uh, 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 operational center where they exchange information, they exchange ideas, they exchange intelligence, they exchange issues of investigation. So that platform needs to be empowered by us in terms of checking whether there could be any further resources that we may need. So that is what we may look into also. Hence, we have also the Minister of Finance. What is it that they may need to do their job in terms of uh, being able to be supported to, 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 to perform in terms of their responsibilities? But also, <clears throat> it is clear that as a country, uh, we need a permanent structure like the Fusion Center. So that is what Cabinet will also look into, that that Fusion Center it's very important in our fight against corruption as we move forward. How do we then locate it and it grows as it grows organically? How do we give it a legislative framework and a legislative guidance that will enable it to function with a clear uh, line of command? And those are issues that um, we will still iron out in terms of the line of command, where will they, how will they be located and so forth. But that is the responsibility that cabinet is still looking into. We are not ready now to say this is what is going to look like, uh, this elephant. But uh, it's something that uh, we want to allow that fusion center to grow organically and then uh, we will enable it in terms of legislation to give it a proper umbrella that will then clothe it and enable it to function with a proper uh, legislative uh, framework. But at this stage, we are encouraged by the fact that the law enforcement agencies on their own and through the coordination that the president did are cooperating, they are working together, they are sharing information. And um, I think that answers the question whether we are looking at a unit like a Scorpion or something like that. Uh, we are looking at that fusion center uh, growing organically and then when we, we are ready we will be able to inform the nation that this is the direction that we may need the fusion center to take going forward after they've resolved some of the issues related to COVID-19. But you will also remember that there is capacity that is beginning to be winded down from the Zondo Investigation uh, Commission of Inquiry, which is now uh, gradually some of the investigators have done their part. We need to give them a permanent home because they've already acquired a very good skill that will be helpful for the fight against crime going forward as a country. So we'll need to find a way 
including the capability in terms of a uh, network uh, uh, of uh, technology that is being used by the Zondo Commission. So that is what uh, we are beginning to engage on, and uh, hopefully soon we will be able to to give a clear answer to that uh, as a, as cabinet. On the on the conflict of interest, whether there is a conflict of interest that we have identified at this stage, we have not yet identified any, and. Um, as and when it arises, uh, uh, when these lists are being published, uh, members of the public will be welcome to to play their role if they, s they observe any conflict of interest, but uh, we don't have any that we are aware of. Um, whether this is another lip service that uh, you have seen uh, ANC officials uh, or government officials uh, going back to, to, to Parliament, it is not a lip service. Uh, the President has already uh, stated on many occasions that uh, we need to deal with corruption. And um, I think he has demonstrated the political will, even cabinet has demonstrated political will by un un uh, unblocking the challenges that law enforcement agencies are, are, are facing. For example, the, 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 the allowance or the passing of the regulations that allows the Zondo Commission uh, investigators to share uh, the information with any other law enforcement agents. That kind of conversation is happening within all law enforcement agencies. How do they work together? How do they help us to, to go forward? And also including uh, some of the unblocking of issues of budgetary constraints. For example, one of the things that are currently happening in the National Prosecuting Authority, they have recently advertised about 100 posts across the country which is a sign that the um, government is committing resources to help law enforcement agencies to capacitate themselves to have uh, resources that will enable them to respond to the challenges of uh, corruption and crime that is facing our country. So that is a clear commitment from government, and government is committed to see uh, action being uh, taken by all the law enforcement agencies that they must act without any fear, favor, or prejudice as they are instructed or enjoined upon by the Constitution to do so. Thank you. We will take one more last round. And I have a caller. And then thereafter, it's Peliswa in the WhatsApp. So, caller. Thank you, TG. I have uh, Karen Abram from ANCA on the line. Go ahead, Karen. Uh, thank you, Sis Um I want to ask the Minister uh, two questions. Um, in the letter that the President uh, releases on a Monday, he speaks about this fusion center, and the ANC, um, NEC also spoke about uh, amalgamating different law enforcement agencies. Um, I want to understand what he means by fusion center. Is it a new fancy name for the old Scorpion? Will it be um, prosecutions uh, led? Uh, are they planning to put all the resources in one unit under the leadership of uh, perhaps someone like Herman Nicolier in the investor, investigative directorate? That's the one question. Uh, and then the second question I, I want to ask. I interviewed the head of the SIU, Advocate Andy Motive, last week, uh, and he said that he had handed the premier in Gauteng, David Makura, a report on an e-commerce tender worth 30 million rand, uh, and the premier was meant to release that to the public. The premier hasn't done it, even though he's had a press conference. Did the cabinet perhaps get a report uh, from uh, the uh, housing government on why exactly the Premier is still not releasing the findings of the SIU into that 30 million rand e-commerce tender because uh, government keeps on saying that it is embarrassed, uh, that uh, there is corruption and that they want to act with speed. There is an SIU report sitting on the Premier's desk in housing. Uh, is the cabinet not concerned that uh, Trebia Makura uh, is not releasing that and not acting because the head of the SIU said on the national television that irregularities were indeed found? 
um, why can't you just act on that finding instead of forming another uh, interministerial uh, committee? Thank you. Thanks, Karim. What's up? Thanks, DJ. The first question is from Mendiwina. He is asking, did the cabinet discuss the ANC's proposal for a multi-agency unit to investigate corruption? And would, the, would Minister Lamula like to see a return of a, of a Scorpions type unit that is prosecutorial led? The second one is from Marvin from Cape Argus. Can the minister please tell us how far the process of making the list of the National Sex Offenders Registry public? Last year, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced he will be looking into making it public. How far is that process? And then the next question is from Nokanya Dambo from Jakaranda FM News. How will the mandate of the Interministerial Committee differ from the mandate of the SIU in its investigations into COVID-19 looting? To the best of your knowledge, how much of the COVID-19 funds have already been incorrectly spent since the start of the pa pandemic. In dealing with corruption, is government willing to undertake a lifestyle audit of the ministers as well? Um, I have three more, did you? Because it's the last round, le let's have all those questions and then minister can just wrap up and, and all answer right. all the questions. Wonga Sirai from Inkonjan FM is asking the inter interministerial task team comprises of cabinet ministers only. How can the country be assured of justice if there are ministers involved in, wrong, in wrongdoing? Can we trust the task team that they will investigate their colleagues and comrades? If and when ministers are found to have acted unduly, can we expect that they will be asked to pay the monies or they just be let go from the ministerial responsibilities? Paul Vecchiato from Bloomberg is asking, has cabinet been briefed on the IMF loan and in particular the conditions? Do these conditions express concern about corruption? And then the last one is from Masiho Rash. Rash, Rash EWN. Sorry about that. Minister, how fast will your committee work to ensure that the allegations of corruption associated with COVID-19 does not hamper efforts to combat, to combat the pandemic? That's all for now. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister, this is the last round. If you can respond to those questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I thought I've answered the question uh, asked by uh, Karima, but uh, I will respond, I will uh, repeat again. Uh, there is a fusion center that is already existing, uh, which uh, comprises of uh, all the law enforcement agencies uh, to deal with the COVID-19 related uh, 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 malfeasance or malpractice or corruption or anything that might have happened. And we are saying that fusion center should be allowed to grow organically. <clears throat> we are looking at um, legislation to ensure that that fusion center has a home in terms of a legislative framework that will uh, allow it to do its job with a clear center of command and also with it acting independently without any interference from anyone as demanded by the constitution of a prosecution without fear or favor or prejudice investigations by the police without fear or favor to anyone so that is what um, it's, it's a discussion um, that um, is still ongoing and uh, when cabinet is ready we'll be able to tell the public but at this stage we want that organic center to grow organical and grow to a level where we need to house it with legislation for it to have a proper legislative framework that will enable it to 
to function housed uh, in a proper legislation that enables us to, to function because while we still have that fusion center, each entity is still governed by its own separate legislation and so forth. How do we then coordinate and ensure that they work together uh, through that framework? But at this stage, they are working together through them uh, being coordinated through the NPA, the police, and those various agencies. And the president also had an, uh, encouraged them to work in unison and in a unit because corruption is a sophisticated crime. It's um, complex, some of it, some of it is very sophisticated, so it needs collaboration from a variety of angles in terms of multidisciplinary skills that are needed to deal with corruption. Hence now they are working together in that platform. The report with regards to the Houting Department of Health, um, I think we'll just need to verify that one so that uh, when we respond, we respond from an informed angle. Maybe Ms. Williams will uh, be able to, in, in the further discussions and interviews, be able to report and respond. But uh, I will also undertake to, to look into that uh, uh, report because um, I will not be able to respond to a report I have not really seen or I'm not uh, aware whether it has been submitted or not. We will verify. The, whether we have looked into the ANC proposal, I think uh, it's related to the fusion center. The, whether, when the president has spoken about uh, publishing the list of sexual uh, uh, offenders, we, we have just approved the bills. Cabinet has approved the bill that relates to the National Sexual Offenders Register. And that bill contains uh, a provision that relates to the question that uh, the, 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 the caller has, uh, has asked. So it is in the bill that is uh, there now for public uh, comment. It's available even in the website of the National Department of, of, of Justice. To, to the best of our knowledge, um, how much has now been spent up to so far uh, in this regard, we'll want to leave that to the Department of Finance, but they are part of the Interministerial uh, Committee. When the lists are published, they are made uh, public, you will be able to see who got what tender, what is his name or her name, what is the name of the company, what were they appointed to do, for how long, how much was the cost of that, uh, uh, of that procurement. But National Treasury will still consolidate and be able to give the full details or in terms of the amount. Hence, they are part of the Interministerial uh, Committee. And I must uh, <clears throat> state that the Interministerial Committee is not replacing the work of the investigators of the Fusion Center. We, we are there to call upon our DGs to call upon the various uh, role players within the state that dealt with procurement to publish the list to if there is anything we will allow that to be handled by law enforcement agencies we are not replacing the constitutionally mandated law enforcement structures to deal with malpractice and corruption they must continue to do their job we are just going to help them with further more information to say in this department of justice these are the companies that did the job this is how they did it and this is the amount and if there is any suspicion there will be investigation to verify whether there was any malpractice there was any corruption there was no compliance with whatever prescripts and then the law enforcement agencies can take it uh, from there the IMF loans, whether we discussed it or not, yes, we did discuss the IMF loans. We were briefed by the Minister of Finance, and I think uh, with due time he is going to brief the nation about uh, the issues that he has discussed with the IMF and the various uh, multilateral agencies responsible of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 with regards to, to loans. He is going to give a clear briefing in this regard, uh, in terms of that. And... Um, I think that was the, the last one, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, I have dealt with the, the bill has been published. Okay. Okay. No, thank you very much. The oh. The lifestyle audits of uh, ministers. I think the president had uh, announced that there will be a process for lifestyle uh, audit. It just needs to be actioned through the Department of Public Service and Administration because it's the one uh, responsible for, for such. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've come to the end of the post-cabinet briefing. And thank you so much uh, to all the media houses that managed to come. We adjourn. Thanks. Thank you. See you. Thank you.